Hello everyone. So today we will talk about iteration bound of DSP algorithms. Now most DSP algorithms are recursive in nature and they contain feedback loops. In like if we draw the data flow graph of the algorithm, we'll have loops. Now these loops impose an inherent fundamental lower bound on the achievable iteration or sample period. This bound is referred to as the iteration period bound or simply the iteration bound. Uh, it's a characteristic of the algorithm so it's important to note that this characteristic doesn't uh, change with uh, the inputs to the algorithm or the outputs or how exactly the algorithm is being implemented in hardware. This is the fundamental uh, lower bound of the algorithm and we cannot achieve a lower uh, an iteration period lower than this even if we had infinite processors available to us now uh, it's not always necessary that the al al algorithm will execute at the lowest iteration bound uh, it could be higher this is just the bound it, it's just the bound There are several uh, advanced methods to formally define and find the, uh, the iteration bound. Uh, we'll be looking at the simplest one here. And to start with it, we will define a data flow graph representation for the algorithm. It, this is specifically for the algorithm. The graph that we are about to draw is for an algorithm. So when the algorithm changes, the graph changes. So the data flow graph uh, abbreviated as DFG. And we'll start with uh, the basic thing about DSP algorithms is that they are usually recursive and non-terminating programs. Like when this algorithm is executed as a program, it's usually non-terminating and that means if I start with an iteration of n is equal to 0 or let me say this is the first iteration first n or we could call it the first sample or whatever this can go on to n is equal to infinity so the algorithm started executing here and it keeps it keeps on executing till infinity because it's non-terminating pretty important thing here now we'll define the data flow graph representation of the algorithm and for that we'll simply start with an example first so example of an algorithm so let me define my own algorithm as for n is equal zero to infinity as we said here and this is sort of a pseudo code so y of n is equals to a of y n minus 1 is the, is one sample plus x of n where a is a constant and I have an addition operation and one of the samples is from the previous iteration n minus 1 and one sample is from the present iteration n. Although uh, the terms involved here, one is x, that's the input, and y is the output, so that's a general convention. And now, uh, we are more interested in the data flow graph and how to construct it because we need that to formally define iteration bounds and how to calculate them in different circumstances. Uh, so, a graphical representation of this it's not exactly a dfg but it's still a graph we'll start with the simpler one first and if this x is the input i could simply represent it as x is being added this uh, this addition here i need an addition and i have a multiplication here so i'll start with the addition the addition adds x and it adds y so i'll have to define y somewhere i can see that the output of this addition gives me y n so if this is the output of the addition i'll need to call this y of n there's nothing else i can call it 
and now the I've still not defined the other input to the addition and I have to define this somehow so I'll say that uh, that needs to be present here now interestingly that is a sample of y from the pre previous iteration so to do that I need to delay this y of n so there has to be some form of delay I draw here and like I wanted to bring y in here directly but I can't do that because it's not just y of n there's this a here that's being multiplied so I'll need a multiplier and I'll feed in a as the other input of the, the multiplier interesting thing to note here is that um, or sometimes we can we can simply choose to write d outside this graph not here notations so interesting thing here is that this output is actually a output of the multiplier i mean is a into y n and that's being delayed here so we don't directly get the delay here we delay it after multiplying so that can be done on this uh, now coming to the more formal version of uh, a data flow graph this is not a da data flow graph it's a graph that represents the algorithm as fine it's good for our understanding but not a dfg so a dfg for this program this algorithm would be defined as this in this fashion it's a goes to b comes back to now it's easier to construct the dfg once i have this this is the dfg and it's easier to construct it once i have this graph the algorithmic graph and i'll have to place the delay here and now i've introduced a and b i i never define what's a and b if i look here i have just additions and multiplications so what's a and b so a and b are like hardware implementations they are like processors or we can imagine them as usually call them hardware units 